Hey guys, uh, I've got another deck video I'm gonna do. Deck profile, this is my favorite deck that I actually use uh, competitively. Uh, not super competitively. Like, I don't expect to ever like top at a YCS or anything like that. But this deck has actually been relatively consistent uh, based on the matchups that I've been getting. So this is a Geiger God deck. It, it excels at exceeding and it has a couple synchros in there too. I got some tuners like Gale in the deck and Effect Veiler. So, start off, I run Triple Girl, uh, you kind of have to, a lot of people say you don't need to, but I really think you have to run 3 Girl, just to add consistency, just to get whatever level you need, when you have Gaga Magician, because he's pretty easy to bring out, she's the one that's it's kind of difficult to bring out. But she's got a really good effect where when she exceeds summons, uh, you can make one of your opponent's monsters have zero attack. Triple Gaga Magician, obviously if it's Gaga Ga. Uh, so triple Gaga Ga Magician and again three girl. So these six cards are how you're gonna go into all your one through eight exceed exceed summons. So he the only downside of Magician is that you can't use him as a synchro. Uh, you can't use him for a synchro summon, but you can use girl for a synchro summon. So this lets you go into uh, synchro monsters. Next, uh, this card is in here, Dark Magician Girl, but it doesn't really need to be in here. You can side it out, just put whatever you need in here. I usually always side this out after game one, just because it's a horrible top deck, and so you want to always throw it in the graveyard as fast as you can, or banish it with Dimensional Alchemist, which the deck uses. But this is actually used with Magician to get uh, a certain Spellcaster exceed monster. Next, one BLS because the deck can run a lot of light and darks, so you obviously are going to run BLS. I actually thought this guy was going to get banned. I have no idea why this guy is still in the game, but since he's in there, might as well use him because the deck needs a boss monster. So just throw him in there. I was actually planning on taking him out for Demok because everybody was saying that Demok's going to come back and this is going to go away. Basically, going to tag out, but apparently that didn't happen or it's not going to happen, so whatever. Still gonna annoy everyone with BLS. Next one, Dark Arm Dragon, because there's lots of dark monsters in the deck, so you can run Dark Arm. It's he's relatively easy to summon in this deck. One Gores, another boss monster, stops OTKs. Uh, I always will bring out a rank seven exceeds monster with Gores plus his token. One Chaos Sorcerer. The funny thing is, this card got limited and with BLS still around, and I always only ran one in the in the last format for the March 2012 term uh, format. I always ran just one chaos sorcerer and one bls like i didn't even side another chaos sorcerer because i didn't really see the need to um so yeah the funny thing is this deck never got touched from the ban list at all it's still exactly the same next for light monsters i have two cyber dragon for light monsters so all of their monsters were dark except for bls so this guy plus gaga magician you get uh, tyrus or adrius or Crimson Ninja. One Veiler, he's a tuner, he's one star. He's really good uh, at stop it, slowing your opponent down. He's a pretty good hand trap card. One Gale, he's one of the best tuners, three star. Uh, I like to use him with Summoner Monk to go into Arcanite Magician, and his effect is really good. Triple uh, Mystic Tomato. Mystic Tomato is used to bring out either Girl or Magician when he's destroyed, so he just searches them out. One Summoner Monk. Summoner Monk is used with Gale to get Arcanite Magician, or he's used with Gaga Magician to get Utopia or a rank four. One Honest, because of so many lights, you have to run Honest. It's one of the best hand traps. One Sangan, just search out whatever, more deck thinning. Two Dimensional Alchemists, uh, ban it, basically banish the top card from your deck once per turn. He goes up to 1800, so he powers up. And then you always want this guy to die as fast as you can. When he's destroyed, you can return a monster that is removed from play to your hand. So essentially, I always will use him to hopefully uh, banish like DMG or Girl or Gale or some monster, like Magician or something that I can use later on for XCD summoning. Two Thunder King, people say this card's not that good. I still find it useful. It's good against uh, a lot of stuff that a lot of monsters that special summon. So it's still pretty good. It's a light. So it works with Honest. It slows down decks that like to search 
add cards from the deck to the hand. So it stops Rota, it stops so it stops E heroes. Still relatively good card. Um, so yeah, I, I run one of two of these. Sometimes I side these out. A lot of times I'll side them out for like a Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer or something going into the game too. So for spells, one Allure of Darkness. I don't really like this card. I will usually side it out based on what my opponent uses. I hate uh, removing from play a monster, a dark monster when I don't really want to. It, it, this deck, I mean, this card Allure has some inconsistency issues with this deck. But again, I I kind of remedy that by using Dimensional Alchemist. Yes. Two pot of duality, I always only used to use two. So even though this card is now semi, uh, it didn't change at all. Adds consistency. One Book of Moon, one Heavy Storm, one MST, one Mind Control, one Dark Hole, one Monster Born. Those are the pretty much staples. I only put one MST because there's only room for one and I have the others in the side deck. So yeah, one's, one seems to be good enough. And then for traps, um, these just depend, whatever. I, I, always, I main deck one bottomless trap hole just because I hate paying 2,000 life points with warning. Although Warning is the better card, so I sometimes side this out. Depends. One Mirror Force, because Mirror Force is just, it's good. One Torrential Tribute, it's good. One Call of the Haunted. Uh, the reason why this is in here is, again, like you have a dead Gores or a dead girl or a magician or something. Usually it'll be magician, so you call magician, you summon girl, and then you exceed, or you call Gores or whatever, and then you just exceed summon. One Magician Circle, uh, sometimes I side this out, sometimes I don't. It's used to bring out magicians, or just basically spellcasters, all the way up to DMG. And then Solemn Judgment because Judgment stops everything and you can always use it even late game when you have less than 2,000 life points and it stops everything aside from like monster effects. So that's the main deck for the Exceed or for the side deck or not side deck for the extra deck. I have a couple of synchro monsters but mostly it's Exceed monsters. I just have one Stardust Dragon to be annoying, one Black Rose to nuke, one Arcanite Magician because I can make this with Gale and Summoner Monk and that's not too hard to do but it's still pretty rare that this gets on the field. Kind of situational depends if you have the cards in your hand or not at the time. For Exceeds, one Lucky Straight because I can just Gores and your Magician duo gets this out or just Magician Girl and magician or magician girl girl and this guy comes out I almost never summon this thing by the way one big guy this is almost this is one that I almost always bring out in every match at some point this is gonna come out either Gores is gonna bring it out or the magicians are gonna bring it out and it's like a permanent mind control is I think of this card as the new Goyo Guardian one Gaia one uh, magi magi magician girl uh, this thing is good it's not I kind of think that the change of heart effect that it has is not as good as big eye because Big Eyes is permanent and Big Eyes stronger. So this will almost always be used as a Monster Born to Monster Born something from the opponent's graveyard. One, Adrius and Tiris because rank five is really easy to do. And another rank five, Crimson Armor Ninja. You can detach, he can't die that turn. He's, so he's good. So those are fives. And then for fours, just C39 and Utopia because the deck has my control. So my control a Utopia and make this card or late game turn Utopia into this so he doesn't die and cause a replay. And then for the rank three, one Leviathan Dragon, one Giga Brilliant, and one is Wind Up Zen Mains. Uh, one, one Exceed monster that I don't have that uh, the deck could probably benefit from is uh, uh, Levier. So that's probably one of the cards that I'll be looking to get to trade or something like that in the future. So yeah, that's the deck. The side deck, I don't have it with me. It's in the box. I want to pull it out. But it's essentially it's like Kaikus in there and uh, Warnings and Typhoons and stuff like that. So, and roll decree. So it depends. It's just whatever. So I found the deck to be really fun to use. I encourage a lot of people to pick it up. I actually think in the future, in the near future, Gagaga -ga -ga might be one of the top decks just because there's going to be more support coming out for it. So yeah, that's the deck. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe. See ya.